What is good, everybody? Welcome to Stats and Cone on the Gold Standard Podcast Network. I'm Rob Stats Guerrero. He is Grant Cone. Grant, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, Rob. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you. A little excited because we just got some breaking news like 10 minutes before we were set to start the show. Stefan Diggs is no longer a Buffalo Bill. He's going to join former 49ers defensive coordinator D'Amico Ryans in Houston. Cool. Good move for <laughs> for D'Amico Ryans and Stefan Diggs. It's his third team. And what the the Texans gave up a second round pick next year, which is not a ton. And they had to give up a fifth, I believe, this year or something. Yeah, that's the crazy part about all of this to me is the compensation. They couldn't even get a first round pick for Stefan Diggs. It's a second round pick in 2025 right. that actually technically belonged to the Minnesota Vikings. And Houston gets Diggs a sixth pick this year and a 2025 fifth round pick, which I you're thought right. honestly was, I mean, if you're Houston, how do you not do that deal? Absolutely. So, but at the same time, Diggs is 30 and investing in wide receivers after 30 is uh, an adventure. They usually fall off a cliff right at that age. So I'm not saying he will, but I'm not saying that this is Brandon Ayuk's value. If, if we're trying to spin this from a Niner perspective, what does this mean about Ayuk's trade value? It's probably not. I don't know if it's a first round pick this year, mm. but it's not a second round pick next year. It might be somewhere in between. He's four years younger. So he's four years younger. Uh, Diggs obviously is older, but he is more accomplished. He has six straight 1,000-yard seasons. Mm -hmm. Ayuk only has two, so there's that trade-off. But that was my first thought was if the if the Bills can't get a first-round pick for Stephon Diggs, are we sure that the Niners can get a first for Brandon Ayuk? Because maybe they can't. And if they can't, Grant, there's no way they trade him. Now, let's step back for a second. You're getting excited. Let's slow down. Diggs is not at the height of his trade value right now. He's, I mean, he was four years ago, right? When he was traded from, when he was about 26 years old and he was traded from the Vikings to the Bills and he did get a first round pick at that point. A, a, a late first, not, not even that late, like 23 or something like that. To me, that's where Ayuk is. Ayuk's trade value is at the highest it's ever been and maybe ever will be because in a month or two or three, He's going to get a huge freaking contract. And then it's going to be a lot more difficult to move him after that because you're, tr you're trading him and the contract. So, um, yeah, I, I, there is some correlation here, but I still think it's more about what Diggs got four years ago. Now, the also the biggest difference between Diggs and Ayuk is, of course, Diggs is under contract. He's getting, you know, what he's getting. So right. you're not going to have to give him a new deal. Ayuk, you have to trade for and give a new deal which True. usually means you give up less in the trade. That's just sort of how these things work. Teams aren't willing to give up a whole bunch in compensation and then have to pay a whole bunch of money. So that's the other difference. Yeah, depending on how they feel about, you know, the players that position in the draft and where they're at with their quarterback and, and their window or whatever. Um, look, I still think that Brandon Ayuk is a great player. I think he's approaching his best years. I don't even think he's shown his best yet. The next four years are probably the best years of his career. And um, I think he's worth a lot. Is he worth the first round pick this year? Maybe a late one. He was a late first round pick. And if not, he's probably worth at least a second round pick this year. A second plus. I think he's better than Stefan Diggs and significantly younger. Um, but this does kind of make you raise your eyebrows like, I don't know. Like the Jaguars weren't willing to trade their first round pick for Brandon Ayuk. So what is the value really? JC says Diggs has that T.O. Moss reputation, which is true. He's kind of a diva a little bit. Uh, well, is Ayuk? No, I think Ayuk doesn't have that reputation at all. That's what I was going to say. He's the, yeah, but he hasn't gotten paid yet. He's got... I'm not, I'm not... Nothing against him, but he wants his targets. He wants his money. I mean, I'm just saying, we don't really know who Brandon Ayuk... You don't really know who these players are until they're highly paid. Then they reveal themselves. Pause. Well, I mean, what wide receiver doesn't want targets and money? That would be my response. I mean, Brandon Ayuk, had, hey, look at his body language when he doesn't get the ball. He slumps his shoulders. I mean, I'm just saying that Brandon Ayuk isn't necessarily as aw shucks, I'm out here for the team as people might think. It's just fine. He's a okay. wide receiver and a very, very, very good one. A great one. 
Brad Reeves asked an interesting question. What does the Diggs trade mean for Ayuk's potential trade value? I'm on the side of keeping Ayuk if we were offered the same deal Diggs went for. Would you take that deal for Brandon Ayuk that the that the Bills? No, just got? absolutely not. And again, I'm I'm trying to say I don't think that I think there's a big difference between them. Yeah. Go back and look at what Diggs was traded for four years ago when he was Ayuk's age. Now he did get a first round pick in return, and the Vikings use it on Justin Jefferson. Surprise! I mean, the Bills have lost a ton of people this offseason. Meanwhile, yeah. our boy D'Amico Ryans, hell, he's going to be in the AFC Championship game next year. Well, we'll see. He's got one hell of a quarterback, and now he's got some really good wide receivers. That team's looking pretty good. <laughs> looking pretty good. Good. Can somebody beat the Chiefs so that the 49ers don't have to play the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, please? Can we do that? Uh, Smack Jones, thank you for the Super Chat, says, first round, draft a tight end, Sander or Bowers if around. Draft up to steal a top eight offensive tackle. In my opinion, Guyton, Morgan, Barton, or Sua Matia. Uh, then draft Wilson from Michigan. Well, there, there's no way the 49ers are getting Brock Bowers. Like, that is not happening. The Niners are at 31. I'm, am I crazy? No, they're not going to get him. But no. he's saying trade up, I think. Draft, Draft up to steal top eight OT. So if you're going up to get the tackle, then how are you getting Bauer? Like, I I don't understand this question. We'll see. Maybe he'll clarify it in the comments. Yeah. I'll be looking. Smack, clarify yeah. it. Uh, well, I'd love to answer your question. I just don't You don't quite. have to super chat it. We'll just put it on the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Diggs doesn't block. There's a comment from uh, from YouTube, from Faya, okay. Faya Chief. Um, okay. You don't pay wide receivers for their blocking. Okay. Like Who cares? That's the Texans problem. Yeah. And they like them. So the deal made me think that, damn, I feel less like Brandon Ayuk is going to get traded this offseason than I did before the deal happened. I don't feel that way. I actually think that there's a significant chance that Brandon Ayuk gets traded. And I think that the Niners are in a tough situation because they're smart and they're shrewd. And I think that they understand that probably trading Ayuk is the best move. But how do you sell that to your fans? How do you sell that to your locker room? That might be tough, especially after you cut Brandon, uh, Eric Armstead. Um, still, though, it's a business. And first of all, before I get into why I think the Niners should trade Brandon Ayuk, I just want to say that I think he's a great player. And I've always felt he's a great player. Since the first time I saw him practice, I've compared him to Torrey Holt. I think he could be the kind of guy who could lead the league in receiving yards for a season, multiple times. I think he's great. But but I don't think he's worth $27 million a year on the 49ers. On another team, for sure. If you put him on the Rams in 2000 with Mike Marks as the coach, or the or the Chiefs right now, absolutely freaking lutely um, he'd be worth every penny. Be a great investment for those teams. Teams that are really committed to throwing. Teams that have quarterbacks who can make all the throws. Offensive lines that can give the quarterback some time. And a coach who's really committed to passing and is like has a good playbook, <laughs> has good play designs, and is comfortable with that part of the game. If he were on that team, then yeah, absolutely, absolutely freaking movie. But he's not. He's on the 49ers. and you know it's it's they're not going to change their offense. It's a very particular offense. They're a run first offense. And they're not suddenly going to start giving Brandon Ayuk 160, 170 targets a season. It's not going to happen. He's going to his role is going to stay the same, and he's great in his role. But they don't have the offensive philosophy to fully get take advantage of his skill set and get the return on an investment they would need after spending 27 million a year. They don't have the offensive line to have that kind of a passing game. They don't have the quarterback who can fully take advantage of Brandon Ayuk's skill set. They don't. Um, so. That's what to me was interesting. That's just keep droning on. They're linked to Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd's not like Brandon Ayuk at all. I mean, he's a slot receiver. That would be the replacement for Ayuk. Well, look at the scheme. Look at the quarterback. What they do is they throw those digs over the middle all freaking day. And Ayuk can catch those, but he can also do so much more that the Niners don't really fully take advantage of in another team when another quarterback could. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> well, there are, you're you. right, though. There are two questions at play. There are one... Does this player's skill set warrant top five wide Hell receiver yeah. money? Hell and then yeah. there's, are is this team going to use them enough to justify that kind of contract? That's, That's why I've question. been so frustrated yeah. with Kittle because they're paying Kittle like yeah. a top tight end and they don't use him nearly enough to justify that contract. I could understand yeah. the 49ers saying it doesn't make sense for us. That money, we could get more bang for our buck 
with that money on the offensive line or the secondary or the defensive line, wherever they want to go. Mm-hmm. I would get that if I were if if they did move on from Ayuk. I don't know if the fan base would. I think they would be pretty skeptical. I don't care if the locker yeah. room would. I don't care about the locker room. Like I'm I think that Kyle is way too worried about the locker room. He takes it into consideration way too much. Do what you think is best for the team and the locker room will come with you. I agree. And I think this is what's best for the team and not to take a shot at Purdy. I'm not, but he's like, he's not that kind of quarterback who could really take advantage of Brandon. Ayuk. Now they have a great connection, but Purdy lives over the middle. He doesn't have a big arm. He's not going to take a lot of deep shots. And I feel like if you're going to be spending $27 million a year or more on Brandon, Ayuk, you should be taking those shots because he's going to be open down the field and, and not just, so it's not just like the volume of targets. It's like how you use them. And, but the volume of targets is a big problem too. Do you know where he ranked in terms of targets last year in the NFL? Guess. Oh God, it's low. Uh, 30th, 36th. Wow. And you're going to make him like the, one of the five highest paid wide receivers in the league, which he deserves. But as soon as you do that, you're never you're like, he's going to be overpaid and you're not going to be able to trade him. That's the problem. If you think about trading him, now's the time because you'll give him all that money. You won't give him the touches to back it up. And then his reputation will be, well, he's not living up to his contract. I mean, you're dealing with that right now with Debo Samuel. And the reason you gave him that money is because you're like, well, he's such a big part of our running game. We can justify it. He's not just a wide receiver. But then you trade it for Christian McCaffrey. Now you can't justify it anymore because you throw the ball 30 times a game. 30! It's, and you have all these receivers that you have to pass the ball, you spread the ball around to. I just, It's not going to end well if they if they ex- extend Brandon Ayuk. It's going to be a mistake, even though he's great. It's going to be a mistake for them and for him. He should go. They should get someone else. He would have to be so efficient to live up to that contract if he yeah. got the same number of targets that he got. He was incredibly right. efficient last year, almost 18 yards per catch, which I don't know if you... Did you watch the full nightcap interview with Ayuk with, when he was with Shannon and uh, Ocho? Mm-mm. So he talked in the interview, he kind of joked about it, but like you could tell he was still mad that he was second in the league in yards per reception. And he even brought up, he's like, I was leading it all year. And then they yeah. benched Brock in week 18 and put yeah. Darnold in there. And he averaged like, you know, three yards less or or no more. I think it was like eight yards less per catch in that last game. And he Ooh. lost it to Pickens. Oh, Pickens also had more targets than him last season. Did he really? Well, that's not Pickens. shocking, I guess. Like Sam Laporte, Trey McBride had more targets than Brandon. I- when you really look at it, it just doesn't make sense because the Niners aren't going to change on offense. It's Kyle. He's not going to change. Is he going to all of a sudden invest in the offensive line and give Brandon Ayuk 150 plus targets a season? Like, absolutely not. Also, again, Brock Purdy's really, 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 really good, but he has one of the weaker arms in the league and he's not going to be fully taking advantage of Brandon Ayuk ever. And again, why are they looking at Tyler Boyd? Because that's a, a wide receiver that would perfectly fit Brandon, uh, excuse me, Brock Purdy. It's a perfect fit. Completely get it. It's a lot cheaper. Joanna watching on YouTube says, Ayuk to the Bills for the 2024 first and fourth, 2025 fifth plus PS5 is the right deal. Now you're using your noodle. Now you're using your noodle. They could use Brandon Ayuk. They just have it. And I got another team. Now that we're really taking this seriously, I appreciate Niner fans for uh, going with me on this because you know the Niners are thinking along these lines. Uh, The Chargers. Mm. The Chargers. Now, I know it's Harbaugh and it's a run-first team, but they have Justin Herbert, who absolutely can take full advantage of Brandon Ayuk. And they have no receivers. So he could get 160 targets a season and they could still be a run for his team. The Chargers, the Bills are another obvious one. Good call, Joanna, for sure. The Bills, Adam Schefter put this up. The wide receivers currently on the Bills roster, Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir, Mac mm-hmm. Collins, Justin Shorter, KJ Hamler, Andy Isabella, former Cardinal, Brian Thompson, Ayuk. and Tyrell. Give him Ayuk. I mean, he'd be, he would perfectly step into that Stephon Diggs role. He's like a younger Stephon Diggs, if not better. I mean, if I'm Josh Allen... Like, forget drafting a wide receiver. I want Brandon Ayuk a thousand percent. Absolutely. And that's like, that's what I'm thinking of with the Chargers, too. Like, you have your quarterback in his prime. Don't get him a quarter uh, wide receiver from the draft and, and cross your fingers. Give him someone who's established and go win the Super Bowl now or go contend right now. So with the Bills out, yes, Chargers, too. 
but the Bills are definitely more com- committed to throwing than the Chargers are, or at least Harbaugh is. The Chargers have the fifth overall pick. There's no way they're trading the no. fifth overall pick for Brandon Ayuk. No. But the no, Bills no, no. are in the 20s. The Bills are 28. So it's Perfect. not that much higher than where the 49ers Perfect. are now. Perfect. If you were the 49ers and the Bills said you could have our first round pick this year. Yes. You take yes, it. Yes, I'll take it. I will take it. Because you trade them to the AFC. Like you don't have to fa- well, you have to face them this year, don't you? They gotta uh, face yeah, the you Bills. Do. You would have you to do face, face them. All right. Well, but still, you gotta face them like once every four years, something like that. Three years, something like once every four years. Okay. So yeah, you can deal with that. But I think it's a great it would be a great trade for the Bills. They should be absolutely looking for someone like Brandon Ayuk. They should want to pay someone like Brandon Ayuk. And uh, yeah, absolutely. First round pick for him. I would do it. I would. JM617 says, the Bills couldn't afford Diggs, but they can afford Ayuk. They didn't trade Diggs because of the salary. They traded They traded Diggs because 30. something weird happened between happened. him and the team and him and Josh Allen. Like. Yep. It happened in before the season even began last year. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, Diggs like left, and the head coach at first, his first reaction, Sean McDermott said it was like a serious concern, and then they tried to like, oh no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. No, 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 you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Something weird happened. I don't know if you saw Diggs last night on Twitter, Grant. Somebody posted like, uh, oh, okay, I have it right here. Does Josh Allen benefit from having a top tier receiver? Yes. Is Diggs essential to Josh Allen's success? No. And Diggs replied to that. Are you sure? So clearly something was up there. E- okay. So yeah. Uh, goodbye, Stefan. Hope it works out with you and your new team. But uh, I think Ayuk to Buffalo would be freaking perfect. And it would be kind of like, you know, hey, you want more money? Go enjoy Buffalo. Maybe you will. I think he grew up in Reno, right? It's cold. Yeah. Just saying. Okay. I think Ayuk's built for it. I think it would be perfect. But it'd be kind of scary because, man, Josh Allen probably win the MVP and the Super Bowl. Maybe. But Maybe. I would then then let's just play this out though, right? Okay. So mm-hmm. the 49ers have 28 and 31 in yep. the first round this yep. year. Yeah. If you want to move up to get yep. one of the best offensive linemen, you, you can. Go. Like yep. you have so much flexibility at that point. Now, some a lot of people would say, or you could stay there and draft an offensive tackle and a uh, wide receiver. I mean, you have options. Yeah. It's a good move. It's a good move. And you're not strapped like strapped with a contract that you can't justify. And yeah. and it's like, look, he's a great player. He deserves the contract, but you can't justify it. And once you give it to him, you can't trade him. Look at the Debo situation. You can't. Modelo time 1999 on Twitch. Shout out to the Twitch fam. What about a first round pick swap with the Chargers and maybe a few more picks mid round? So they'll probably see. figure it out. They'll figure it out. They'll work it out. But those are two teams I'm looking at. Chargers and Bills. Do you think that there would be any hesitancy on the part of Jed York to do a trade with Jim Harbaugh? Mm. (laughs) I know they like kind of made nice because they brought the 2012 team back, but there's a difference between using Jim Harbaugh to sell tickets and get people to your stadium and then potentially giving him what you think could be an all pro wide receiver. I, if you have conviction that you're making the right move, you, then you make the trade. But yeah, that 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 wouldn't be a business decision. That would be something else. <laughs> but again, if you're scared about that, then trade into Buffalo. If I were the bill, like if I'm the Bills, you have to have called John Lynch by now. Have like to. you have to. Have to. Like, you're gonna draft a, a wide receiver and cross your fingers that he's good. Well, what's your track record drafting wide receivers in Buffalo? So you got to make this trade. And plus, they were the guys that traded for Diggs four years ago. So True. they're like, it's kind of their MO. Instead of drafting a guy, let's trade for someone on a team that doesn't want to give them the extension, which seem to be the Niners right now. It's too good. This should happen. It's good. It's, it's right for the Bills, right for Ike, it's right for the Niners. And if they if this happens, I'll praise everyone. Just so much positivity. Yes, that's what you're known for. Um, I'll tell you what, I bet you Ayuk's agent has already talked to the Bills. Yeah, if he if he's worth his money, which I'm sure he is, right? Like, I, this is perfect. I didn't even think of this when we were doing the show. I, of course, the Bills are the team that should trade for Brandon Ayuk. It's perfect. Yes, if you're Buffalo, That's exactly what Josh Allen needs. He, it will make him so much better. Sorry. Yeah, you get. I mean, you have Dalton Kincaid there already. Mm-hmm. You get Brandon Ayuk, a route runner, a guy that can get open. You're you got to play the tough AFC. Like, 
I know Buffalo has lost a lot of people, but you get IU that their offense could still be right up there in the top of the league. Yeah. And he, he goes from like catching one deep pass a month to one deep pass a game. That would be great for him. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen, but I'll tell you this. I feel like the chances went up more than they went down after this news. I'm glad that you are with are, are there with me. I thought you would push back, but because to me, I think of you as like kind of the voice of the fan. And wouldn't and, and, and no disrespect. Like I I no. You, you no, you're you're a very big fan of the team. So if you can get behind the idea of the team trading Brandon Ayuk, I feel like most fans could. And it's it's not that hard of a calculation. Is he great? Yes. Is he worth the money? Yes. On this team, though, come on. Be honest. You can't get attached to anybody. You right. really can't. And and like, you know, we can sit there and clutch our pearls about, oh my God, they traded Brandon Ayuk. They didn't win the Super Bowl with Brandon Ayuk. So That's what right. are you really like? That's right. And like the, the Shanahan's, Kyle's a lot like his dad. And when his dad won a Super Bowl in 1997, like John Elway threw completed 12 passes. Starting wide receiver was Ed McCaffrey. They weren't spending that kind of money on wide receivers when they were winning Super Bowls as a family. It's not really how they do it. And I think they know it. And it's they're just kind of caught in a tough position because they developed him. They like him. They know he's great. And they know it might be tough for the fan base in the locker room to, to stomach. But it's probably the right thing to do. Brandon Ray. Ooh, help me out here. J Jamois. I apologize if I got that name wrong. Says any decision the Niners make needs to support Brock Purdy. That's true. Sure. And I have said that. Um, but again, you can support Brock Purdy with another really good wide receiver, or you could support Brock Purdy with a new guard and a new tackle on the right side of his offensive line. Or right. Like, like they could, yeah. I mean, they, they could trade IU, sign Tyler Boyd, and then have two first round picks and spend them both on the offensive line and be like, okay, well, now we have three players helping uh, Brock Purdy. There's more um, than one way to do it. Like, yeah. And I think Brock really, really helped make the offensive line look better than they were last year a lot of times. Uh, so I would be all for helping him. I thought Jim Harbaugh, like, really put it fantastic at the league meetings. He's like, the offensive line is the only unit on your team that doesn't depend on anybody else to be good. And they make yep. everybody else. I love that. I love That's that. Exactly right. And again, look, let's talk scheme. The, the way Kyle Shanahan builds his passing game, it's not the focus of what he wants to do. And what he really wants to do when he passes the ball is play action, get the linebackers to, you know, move towards the line of scrimmage and throw passes over the top in that 10 to 15 yard range over the middle. He does it all the time and he schemes it open and it's effective. It's highly effective. But you don't need to spend $27 million a year on wide receivers to do that. Like, Tyler Boyd can do that. And he has done it. And he, you get him for like $9 million a year. And he's really good. And he's about 29. I, you, you, I'm just, you could get, and you could draft a wide receiver in round one if you wanted to, who has a similar, like, there's so many things you can do that don't involve spending $27 million a year on a wide receiver who you're not going to fully utilize and you know it. Jason Aponte talked with Mike Tannenbaum recently. Uh, Tannenbaum was the former GM of the Jets, former executive with the Dolphins. And he asked Tannenbaum, what would you do with Brandon Ayuk? And, and Mike said, I would sit down with Kyle Shanahan and ask him, like, what's a nice to have and what's a have to have? Thank you. Because some players, you are not have to have. So you have to graduate them, this is the word that Tannenbaum used, from where they are to where they are going. And if where they are going is too expensive for you, you have to let them go because you simply can't yeah. keep everybody. And I think that if you injected Kyle Shanahan with truth serum and said, do you need Brandon Ayuk? He would say, no, he would say, I can scheme other guys open. Right. I can make it work. Would we be a little worse? Yes. But at that position. Yes. At but not overall position. as a team necessarily. Right. Brother Bob says we can trade Ayuk, but we won't win the Super Bowl in 2024. Well, that's Kyle's fault. <laughs> we didn't win it in 2023 and he was here. So what's the like? I, yeah. I don't know. I'm not saying trade him at all costs, but I'm saying if you can get the 28th overall pick for Brandon Ayuk, I would do it. Let's go through the Niners highly paid players that they've extended and, and discuss whether they're uh, li worth it for the 49ers, whether the investment with, was worth it for the 49ers. Um, Christian McCaffrey. Yes. Yes. 
Absolutely, right? We can all agree that the Niners use Christian McCaffrey more than enough to justify what they spend on him. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fred Warner. Yes. Yes. No question. All right. Um, George Kittle. No. No. Okay. Debo Samuel. <sighs> they try. <laughs> they they give him targets, but does he produce to that to justify the salary? No, he hasn't. No. So no. So two guys on your offense, you've already given big extensions to, but you're in this position. It's like, well, we don't really feature him enough to justify. And now you're going to do it again a third time. Did you not learn your lesson? I think they have learned their lesson. I want to give them some credit here. I think they know. I think they've been pretty clear with their messaging. Like, look, we're not extremely eager to give Brandon Ayuk a, 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 everything that he wants. Like, do we love him? Yes, absolutely. Would we give him, would we keep him on a fifth year option? Sure. But, right. We can't justify it. And it's the truth. And you don't have to. That's the thing. No. You can keep him on the fifth year option. You can franchise him next year. And you're still going to be paying him below what he would, you know, ultimately make on a new contract. Like, I don't, you know, if he wants to hold out, okay. But let me, show me the last guy that's held out for a whole year. Le'Veon Bell is like the only guy that I can remember in recent history to ever do it. And how'd that work out for him, by the way? I'm just saying, if I were a general manager and I was considering spending that much money on a wide receiver, I'd really want to feel like I had the quarterback who could uh, take advantage of it, the offensive line who could take advantage of him, and the coach. And I don't think the Niners have any of it fully take advantage of that kind of investment. I think the Bills do. I think the Chargers do. And I think with the Niners, again, it seems kind of scary to trade Ayuk because the Niners haven't had the best draft history. But think about it in terms of value. This is the peak of his value, trade value right now. Right now. If you want, if you, as soon as you sign him, his trade value goes down. This is it. So you got to be bold. Smack Jones is back to clarify his comment. He says, draft Sanders from Texas. He's a dog. Trade up in the second round to get a top eight offensive tackle, Guyton, Morgan, Barton. Get Roman Wilson, then load up on DVs and edge rushers. I'm not totally locked into a particular position, but what, what the realization that I have come to this week is that if the 49ers are going to transition from this kind of core that they have now to a new core and continue to win, they have to get two to three starters out of this draft class. You know what was interesting? I want to keep coming back to this with, with Brock. You know who his go-to guy was in the Super Bowl? Juwan really? Jennings. Juwan Jennings. When, when he was in the biggest game of his life under the most pressure ever, he leaned on Juwan Jennings, and Jennings came through. And again, I think that's informative here. There's a very specific skill set with Juwan Jennings. He's not fast. He's not a deep threat. He's going to own the middle of the field. You could throw it to he's big. He's going to come down with the ball. You could throw it with anticipation. You can trust him. That's where Brock is throwing the ball. They have a great connection. Tyler Boyd is like just like him. He's just like Juwan Jennings, maybe a little bit faster. I think the Niners are starting to learn what Brock needs and doesn't necessarily need. And it's guys like Juwan. Well, that was sort of a question that I asked myself was on third down in overtime of the Super Bowl for as far as you know, the season on the line, right? A touchdown can win you a championship. Mm -hmm. And they drew up a play for Juwan Jennings. That's, who That's where the Brock ball trusts. I said they asked him, uh, Shannon and Ocho asked him like, hey, on that play, like you are wide open. Do you, have you rewatched that play? And I was like, no, I don't even think about that play at all because I knew I wasn't getting the ball. Like that play is not Ooh. for me. He didn't say it in like a mean way, but he just said, Brock's not going to get back to me on that play. He's not going to have time yeah. to get back to me. I'm like right. the third. Especially reason. against the blitz. So like that just goes to show like they drew it up for Jawan, not Kittle, not McCaffrey, not Ayuk, not Debo, Jawan Jennings on third in your life in the Super Bowl, especially because Kyle probably knew he wasn't going to go for it on fourth down. That's yeah. telling. I mean, again, like say what you want about Brock. He's great. He just doesn't have a strong arm. And I don't understand. I, I don't know that pairing him with fast receivers who dominate outside the numbers and deep is the wisest. Can I mean, He'll he'll do a good job with anything, but if you're really trying to maximize the team, maybe he needs just a better offensive line and got more guys who can catch the ball over the middle. I mean, that's all Brock needs, right? Because again, how many shots deep is he going to take? He'll take a few to keep defenses honest, and he'll hit them. He's good. 
but he's living over the middle. Give him as many options there as possible and give him time to throw. Dennis McCray says trading BA, get the guys for the offensive line, start Danny Gray. Now you mm. have Dino Jennings and Gray for the speed, and now you have you you now you have your play action. Have you looked at the news recently? Have you searched the news? I don't know if Danny Gray is gonna be on the 49. Yeah, I don't know about that. Year. I don't know. I'm not gonna say anything. We have to I'm not investigating, but people will and we'll find out. Uh-huh. But yeah, I don't know. First of all, even if there were no headlines recently in the news, I don't know if Danny Gray is on the roster next Good year. Point. So Good combine point. those two things, and mm, I, I wouldn't factor him into. I think you have a much more likely chance of success if you factor in Ronnie Bell than Danny Gray. And I, I was worried about. I was worried about young players like Gray, who have been drafted and kind of shelved and have like money and nothing to do, and they're twenty three. <laughs> I was no, I'm serious. It's like I kind of trade Lance is in that position too. You, know, you just got all this money, and the team's like, yeah, we're not really interested in you for the next couple of years, but we'll get back to you. It's like, okay, well, what do I do with $15 million? Well, Danny Gray didn't have that much, but it's like, I mean, I'm not, I'm a big teenager with a bunch of money and nothing to do. What should I do? Something bad. It's probably. funny. My son is nine years old, and last night he said, he just asked me, if teenagers like to sleep in, why do they stay up so late? And my response to him was because when you're a teenager, you get the power to make decisions for the first time in your life, but your brain is not finished growing. And so you're incapable of making those good decisions. And I don't know that a, a young 20 year old with a lot of money and a lot of time is not a good combination. No, it's really not. So I hope he's not in major trouble. Same with Rasheed Rice. Doesn't look good. Brother Bob says, so what you're saying is Kyle Levy is the Achilles. Kyle Levy. Why do you always have to come up with all these alternate last names for Kyle Shanahan? Yes, <laughs> Brother Bob. I have said that Kyle Shanahan is the reason the 49ers have had all their success and the reason they don't have two championships. I think that's really true. true. Yeah, it's the truth. We I think he's we've we've seen how how far Kyle Shanahan can take a team in his current iteration of what he is. He would need to change and do something different to get over the hump. And um, I'm not sure that he ever will. That's what's kind of interesting about Kyle. He's very dug in for a young man. He's very conservative, baby, because of what his dad did and how much success he had. But he's very certain of what it takes to win a Super Bowl, even though he's never done it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Smack Jones says, I just gave you the three starters. We need stats. Look, I'm not saying you didn't, Smack. I'm, look, I, I don't pretend to be a draft expert. I've never pretended to be a draft expert. All I keep reminding people is, Half the guys taken in the first round are going to suck. Half of them. So just keep that in mind before you freak out about who they get or who they don't get. I just want to point that out. Mitchell and Ness says, Ayuk would be a yes worth the contract. Grant is on a hate Ayuk tip. Then tonight he'll be saying they should sign Ayuk. He does everything right. Whoa, 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 whoa. I started off the discussion by saying I think he's a great player who is <laughs> worth the money on a team that's committed to passing. That's all I said. Mitchell and Ness, damn. Great player. Absolutely worth the All-Pro. Oh, man. If you're Ayuk, what do you do? Uh, you know what? Keep an eye on Ayuk's social media. Let's see if he has any comments. You do? On this whole, like, just shut you, up. No no offense, uh, Brandon. Just shut up. That's what you do. You have an agent. You have people like me and Rob. Like Everyone is advocating for you and saying how you're worth... Everyone's saying you're worth the money. Just sit back and wait. You'll be good. That's what Bosa did. It all worked out. I feel like the more you talk as a player, the, the more teams use it against you. Like, uh, you're a little immature. Not that perfect. Just shut up. That's what <laughs> it, you do. It will work out. Like, I am going to get paid Here by somebody. Else. Yeah, it's going to work right. out. Yeah. And the more, the more quiet you are in this instance, you can talk about other stuff. It just seems confident. It's just a confident move. But when you start tweeting, it's like, uh-oh, it's not going so well in the negotiation, is it? <laughs> Uh -oh. Niners by nature 88 says if I'm Ayuk, I'm sitting. I mean, chances are he's not showing up for voluntary workouts, I would imagine, if you're Ayuk. Like, why would you? Just relax. You let your agent do his job. He knows what he's doing. Relax. You got this. Hey, Smash Mouth is watching the show. Hey! What's up, Smash Mouth? They say the Super Bowl is one game. Getting to the Super Bowl is more difficult than winning one game. You're saying Kyle can't win one game. You're football experts. Come on. I'm saying Jeez. the reason the 49 get a, who Which member of Smash Smash Mouth? You can't just hide behind the whole squad. I don't know. Were you the I bass know. player, the, the, the drummer? I know I that know. Uh, they have been 49er fans for a long time because I've, right. I've gone back and forth a couple of times. I'm saying that Kyle's game management cost them two Super Bowls. 
He was awful at the first half of the 2019 Super Bowl. He was not nearly aggressive enough. He butchered that. He butchered the play calling at the end of that first Super Bowl. He kicked a field goal on the opening series of the second half in that Super Bowl instead of going for it on fourth down. That came back to bite him. In this Super Bowl, he was ultra conservative on third down in two huge spots at the end of regulation and in overtime. Like he he cost them in both of those. And he has doubled and tripled down that he doesn't think he did anything wrong. So also in all three of his Super Bowl losses, he had a lead and got away from his run game. To me, what's crazy about Kyle is like when he's in his groove, he is a top three, maybe even better offensive coach. And you know what his offense looks like. It's under center motion, putting defenses in all kind of conflict, all this play action, running the ball. But then, like, when he's in the second half of the Super Bowl with the lead, it's like, well, you just went an entire quarter without running the ball. Okay, you're in empty formation for, like, the 20th time. Uh, All of a sudden, he's like, he strays from what his identity is as an offense when he's under pressure. And the question is why? And he's done it in three different Super Bowls. And it makes people wonder, like, are you a choker? Does Does the pressure affect you? Because if you really had confidence in what you were doing, you stick with it. And he doesn't. He well, doesn't. Mike McDaniel's comments in that Playmakers podcast really made me wonder how much Kyle gets affected by big games. I mean, he said members of the Falcons coaching staff were hyperventilating before the Super Bowl. Now, he didn't say which. Yeah. So maybe it wasn't Kyle Shanahan. I don't know. Yeah. But McDaniel also talked a lot about how certain guys think that their play calls win games and they get really stressed out because they feel like if they don't call yeah. the perfect plays, then they won't win the game. I, again, I don't know if Kyle talks about two things. He says, with, the, with respect to players, um, is the is the game too big for him? Is the moment too big for him? Uh, for him, the answer is yes. And also, he talks about he talked about this for years. We need closers on our team. You know, we need closers. He's not a closer. He ain't. And look, maybe one playing, day he will be, but he's not a closer. If he's not playing Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, maybe he has more championships. That's a fair thing to say, too. Smash Mouth is back, so did Kyle get them to the Super Bowl? Does he get all that credit like he gets the blame for one game? Yes, he does. And that's why he's I, so I, interesting. I literally he's a just very, very, very good coach who gets very far. Um, but... <laughs> Smash Mouth, would you place a bet right now on Kyle winning a Super Bowl at some point in his life? I bet he would say yes. I wouldn't. I would. That's your I money. Think, I, I think if he's going to get, I, cause I think he's going to get more bites at the apple, right? Do you think Kyle Shanahan is going to make another Super Bowl? For sure. Uh, maybe. Yeah. But is he going to have a better team than the one he had last year? That team was stacked. It's not about being the best team though. It's about winning that one game. The 49ers were the best team all both times they were in the Super Bowl. I think they were the better team and they didn't win it. And they were the better team in 2012 when they went there with Harbaugh. They didn't so win that one either. Luck. You, some of it so is now luck. You're on Smash Mouth side. You just talked yourself into Smash Mouth side. That's crazy. Well, I've, said there's no other coach I would want coaching the 49ers than Kyle Shanahan. But I think it's also true to say he's the reason they don't have two championships. Like, I, I think both of those things are true and can be true. Jeez. Well, I don't think those things jive then. I mean, I give him credit for building the team and getting them as far as he has, but I feel he had the best team, he had the best roster in the league last year and couldn't win a Super Bowl. That doesn't speak well for the coach. And you could say that was bad luck, but it's like, yeah, the other team had Patrick Mahomes. The Niners were better than that team and they lost. And they lost largely because they didn't go for it on fourth down in key situations at the end of the regulation, the end of uh, overtime. I mean, Dan Campbell would have. I, I have to feel like there are other coaches who could win a Super Bowl with the best roster in football. And it's like we give Kyle Shanahan the Patrick Mahomes excuse, but Patrick Mahomes also lost a Super Bowl. Could other he coaches did. have won with this team? Maybe. But Maybe. like also the Chiefs recovered six of the seven fumbles in the game. That's not Kyle Shanahan's fault. Like there is some luck that goes along with this. There is. Right. And it's okay to acknowledge it. Okay. Well, uh, Smash Mouth says, How long did it take Andy Reid? I I don't like that comparison because <sighs> one, Andy Reid doesn't affect Kyle Shanahan at all, except if he keeps beating him at Super Bowls. But two, Andy Reid got the greatest quarterback of his generation. Put Patrick Mahomes in the 49ers, they're gonna have a Super Bowl by now. I guarantee and he you. also never won with the Eagles. You know, you could argue that he needed to leave and start over and uh, honestly look at why it failed in Philadelphia and, and assess himself. I, you could argue it was right for both teams because the Eagles won a Super Bowl before Andy Reid did. I don't Man. 
I don't think that Andy Reid had this big epiphany after leaving Philadelphia. I think he got Patrick Mahomes. Like, Andy Reid's the same guy that blew a massive lead to the Colts. Remember when Andy Reid had Alex Smith? They blew a huge lead to the Colts in the playoffs. I don't think Andy Reid, I think he's the same guy. He's but as much as that, I feel like with coaches, a lot of times your your message can get stale. Bill Walsh talked about it. He coached the Niners for 10 years, and he said basically that's the longest a coach should coach a team. And I know coaches have coached longer, but usually they've won Super Bowls, and they have that kind of gravitas to back it up. I think with Andy Reid, it wasn't getting better in Philly. I mean, that team was very mediocre after Donovan McNabb and Michael Vick and I think it was probably time for him to move on and, and have a, you know, just start over somewhere else. I'm not saying he necessarily changed entirely, but he needed a fresh start. And I think the Eagles did too. And with the Niners, they're entering year what? Eight? Eight. This will be eight. Yeah. Uh, that's Florio talked about eight. that, how he thought that maybe Kyle just needs to move on and go somewhere else. He may else. need to move on eventually. He's got a few more cracks at this, but I wonder if he gets into year 10, year 11, they still can't get over the hump. What do you do? I know what I would do. Clickbait Motorsports says, all this slandering of Kyle's coaching abilities is crazy. Is Kyle fluky? Sure. Is he stubborn? Of course. Is he similar to Marv Levy? Duh. Is Kyle always coming up short? Always. <laughs> <laughs> You're going, oh, that's funny. I like that. Uh, it took me a second, but I got there finally. <laughs> Again, for the record, he's I our want coach, but he's I our coach. Kyle, to be the coach of the Niners, I think he's a really good coach. I don't think he's a perfect coach. And I will continue to criticize him for things that I think he can improve on, which he can improve on them if he accepts his his shortcomings. I don't know that he will, but also I think he could also have a Super Bowl by now if he wasn't playing Patrick Mahomes. So it, it all goes into the stew for me. But that's the problem. When you go to the Super Bowl, t chances are you're going to be facing a great quarterback, a great one. Right. Chances are. Now, they, they, they had that opportunity to face Joe Burrow, and they blew that one. They blew it. All day, every day, Kim says, hey, Kyle, passed up on Patrick. Who are you blaming for that? Kyle, a thousand yeah. percent. He lost to Stafford in the NFC Championship game, so it's not like he only loses to the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Yeah, but in the Super Bowl, he does. Okay, well, he might have <laughs> won the Super Bowl two years ago if he could have beaten Stafford, but he didn't. But it's Jaquaski Tart's fault. It's all Tart's fault. Well, no, there was 10 minutes left in that game when he dropped the interception. I don't, yeah. I don't believe Thank that. You. Um, okay, so I think we've covered the Brandon IU ground. I think we've we have. plowed that ground. The actual plowed. subject of the show that I wanted to get to was Brock Purdy, because I think that Brock needs to take over this team next year. He talked about mm. in the Super Bowl wanting to win for Trent and Kittle and Debo and win for those guys and prove to those guys that he belonged. He's got to stop that now. It's his team. I want to win it for me. I want those guys to want to win it for me. I need him to step up and take over. And I hope that he does. And maybe the fact that he went on this run and he stayed healthy and they got to a Super Bowl will empower him and give him the confidence he needs to do that. But he's already a captain. Like it's got to be 13's team next year. Yeah. And I um, totally agree with that. Uh, I think he's earned it. And I think that goes further. Uh, I retweeted Rich Madrid, who's a X's and O's guru. And he was sort of explaining, which a lot of people know but don't really understand, about how Kyle Shanahan doesn't let his quarterbacks uh, call audibles and adjust protections. That's on the center. Um, I mean, they don't call audibles, but they adjust protections, the center. And he was saying that's one thing he doesn't really like about the Niners. I mean, Shanahan's style of his scheme and that LaFleur, who runs the same scheme but with a little bit different style, allows, empowers, that's the verb I want to use, empowers Jordan Love to do just that. <clears throat> I think it's time to empower... Brock Purdy to do that. He is a very, very, very good quarterback. And you could put more on his plate, especially mentally. I think he could handle that. He'd be good at it if you just let him do it. Well, That's what I, I want to say. I didn't understand that from Rich because Rich said that the quarterback is not allowed to change his protections in the Kyle scheme. And the thinking is that if he doesn't have to worry about that stuff, it makes life easier for him. But Rich said, uh, let's see, it can't. They can't easily identify the pressure pre-snap, so he has almost no idea where the pressure comes from post-snap. Well, that's sort of Rich's commentary. I would say focus more on the first tweet because that's more of just information and facts. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. I, I don't understand, like, yeah. even if Brock could change the protections, he's still allowed to read the defense pre-snap. So I was asking Rich sure. for clarification on that. I just and think Brock should be in charge. Like, take that off of Brendel. Put it on Brock. Like, if, if Jordan Love is trusted to do that stuff in Green Bay, then you should definitely be trusting Brock. And I think one of the reasons that Kyle doesn't or hasn't in the past is he likes his quarterbacks to be somewhat replaceable. 
Like, I'm not putting all my eggs in your basket. I don't want everything to depend on you. I just want you to go out there and do what I tell you to do. And if and when you get hurt or benched, the next guy can go in and, and have a quick transition and just do what I tell him to do. Like, that's not the situation situation you're in anymore. You want Brock to be here for a long time. Like, let him be more of a coach on the field because you trust him. And that's a way that Kyle could evolve that uh, would be really interesting. And it could be like he could easily have the out of being like, hey, I didn't really, at least in San Francisco, I didn't trust any of the quarterbacks we had to be able to handle that. Now I've got my guy. Now I do. Now I'll loosen the reins. That could be part of it. Like with Jimmy, you wouldn't trust him, right? It's like, hey, if Jimmy sees a blitz that we didn't anticipate and he goes with the hard count and then identify the blitz and then change the protection, I could see Kyle being like, Jimmy, just just do what I tell you to do and listen to this. And I get that, but not with Brock. He's proven it over multiple seasons. He's one of the more cerebral quarterbacks in the league. Let him take over pre-snap. Because you have to have a solution for what happened in the Super Bowl. Whatever the system was, it didn't work. Picking up blitzes. Consistently, it didn't work. And I, I mean, it was on Brendel and Kyle. So change that and let Brock be more in charge. He's earned it. You know, I remember a long time, years ago, Steve Young was talking about a conversation he had with Kyle Shanahan. And Steve was talking about how he was blown away by Kyle's system and how he loved it and how he wanted to play in it. But Steve said he asked Kyle, what happens against the blitz? And Kyle's response was, it works against the blitz. And Steve was like, wow, that's amazing. But I, I also remember JT <laughs> O'Sullivan. Right. I remember JT O'Sullivan, you know, pointing out that the Niners do this weird thing that when there's a blitz, they don't throw to replace the blitz. They don't throw to the receiver that's going to the space. That's what, that the blitz that's what Bill Walsh coached. That's what Bill Walsh coached. Yes. And that is a weird thing. I would love for yeah. Kyle to be asked about that, number one, and I would, or Brock. I would love to ask Brock about that too. Like, what's the philosophy there? And I would love for Kyle to be asked, like, why don't you let your quarterbacks change the protections? And would you consider changing that? Yes. And that's the kind of question, like, if I asked it, he'd probably give a really snarky non answer. But if, gets mad. Yep. if Brandon Marshall asked it or Chris Sims asked <laughs> it, he'd get a real long answer. So we'll see. It kind of depends on who's doing the, doing the asking for Kyle. Yep. If you ask it, yeah. he gets real snarky. He gets real. And I try really hard to be like, hey, I'm not saying that I know more than you. I'm just asking a question that a football person would ask. It's hard. You're not a football person to Kyle. Though. No, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, one more thing before we go. Alberto Soto says, do you guys think Detroit will match the offer for Brock Wright? Will he be a 49er? Because that will be a huge addition to our tight end room. Uh, so they have a restricted free agent offer to Brock Wright. The Lions had up until today to decide if they were going to match it. If they choose not to match it, the Niners don't have to give the Lions anything. There's no compensation because of the tender they put on Brock Wright. So we'll know by the end of the day, I would imagine, if Brock Wright is going to be a 49er. I don't know if it's a huge addition to the tight end room. He's a backup tight end. It doesn't really catch a lot of passes. Um, but, you know, great. They need they need backup tight ends. And Cam Latu ain't it. I'll tell you that. My, my question is why they wanted him more than Charlie Warner. It's the same deal. Three years, twelve million. They could have gave that to Warner. Maybe Warner didn't want to be here. I maybe Warner's from Georgia. I believe he went to Georgia, so, he went yeah. back to Georgia. Maybe he's like, you know what, guys, you don't use me. I don't want to be here. Enjoy Santa Clara. I'm out. And then we're like, oh, that's too bad. Well, we'll just get someone else for the same price. <laughs> Charlie Warner. Uh, let's see. He went to Georgia. Yeah. So there you go. And he was born in Georgia. Yeah. So he might have just had enough of the South Bay, which you're not from out here, but. And no, no offense to anyone that lives in the South Bay, but I'll just shut up. I like it. It's nice. Phil South says, Bay. do you fire Kyle if we go back to the Super Bowl, but he doesn't face Mahomes this time, but still ends up choking another Super Bowl? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Like, how many times does a guy have to choke a Super Bowl, have a lead and lose it in Super Bowl before you say, you know what? You know what? I thank you. Thank you for everything. You built this team. You're great. You're so good, man. But we're going to go in another direction now. I think it's fair. Oh, not unless me. you're terrified, unless you have no confidence that you can pick another coach and then you really think you're going to go back to the Chip Kelly, Jim Tom Sula days, which maybe is legit. Like, how much confidence do you have in the Yorks? Zero. I don't know. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. Pick a coach? Zero. But also, well, that's just so, it's like, I don't know, it's depressing to think that it's almost like Stockholm Syndrome. It's like, well, it's the best we can do. All right, let's enjoy it. And, and, and take heart in the small victories. People that think that not getting to the Super Bowl is better than getting there and losing are crazy. I'll take the coach that keeps getting to the Super Bowl over a guy that maybe, if he's lucky, might get to the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, I will. 
I mean, okay. I, I, all I'm saying is if a coach has the best roster in football, a lot of coaches can win the Super Bowl with that roster. Kyle hasn't shown that he's that guy. He could have the best roster in football that he helped put together, and he could still find a way to not know the rules. I mean, come on, man. That's the truth. No, he knew the rules. Yeah, he knew him, man. He knew him so well. Smash Mouth says, thanks for incorporating our comments, gents. Take care. Thank you. Do we want to know what... He, our comments. See, that's interesting. They're presenting a united front. <laughs> We're supposed to think that they're all around one keyboard. I don't know. I'd like to know. Smash. Maybe Mouth. they are. Maybe they are. Thank you for All Star. Hell yeah. All right. I think that's going to do it on today's show. Oh, show. Appreciate you. Appreciate everybody. Please like and subscribe to both YouTube channels, the Gold Standard YouTube channel and Grant Cohen's YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Click the bell. Like button. and subscribe right now. That's right. Do it right now. There are no yeah. likes. Come on. Somebody be the first. Give us a like. Uh, we appreciate it. Grant, what do you have coming up later tonight? Anything? Uh, Niners After Dark with Jesse Naylor, as always. Oh boy. Six o'clock Pacific, nine o'clock Eastern for people that really want to watch it after dark. Because on the West Coast, it's like the sun is kind of going down. Also, real quick, make sure you head to... Oh, my bad. I apologize. Never mind. Uh, scratch that. Don't All head right, anywhere. Don't Stay head tuned. anywhere. Just yeah, head to our YouTube page and look at the other things. How about that? I'm on all the socials at Stats on Fire. Grant's on Twitter at Grant Cone. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. <laughs>